Hey there folks, this is Ryan from ORS Cross Country Skis Direct here in Vermont and uh, here I am hanging out in our warehouse. Got a bunch of skis behind me. Uh, let's talk about these skis. These are backcountry skis. Um, we have a bunch of different categories on our website and the categories kind of help sort of narrow the selection down. There's a lot of skis out there. Uh, if you like to go into the deep backcountry, meaning off trail, out in the woods, um, into the remote wilderness, this is the stuff you want to look at. Uh, any ski in this category is going to have a metal edge, and that metal edge is going to give you the control you need for downhill. So a lot of these skis are about the downhill. Uh, you do have to kind of get from point A to point B, so they're going to have a waxless pattern on the bottom to allow you to kick and glide, but Really, you're looking for turns, uh, generally. Now, backcountry means a lot of things to a lot of people, okay? Some people, backcountry is anything out of a groomed surface. You know, they live in the country, they got a backyard, backcountry. Uh, other people, it is as far away <laughs> from the beaten path as possible, the steepest ridge lines, looking for powder. That's the other end of the spectrum. And then there's all the stuff in the middle where you're just kind of, you know, exploring the woods. So. You never know what kind of terrain you're going to come upon, and so you need to have the equipment to be able to, you know, maneuver through trees, downhill, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so there's quite a spectrum. We're going to kind of walk you through the skis now. All right, and we'll start off with the Rosinal BC70, which is really a light-duty backcountry touring ski. It's here because we do have a package in our backcountry category uh, built around the ski. I guess package number five, but you know, full metal edge, waxless base pattern, uh, but relatively narrow compared to some of these other fat boards. So, you know, this is sort of your versatile, kind of mostly, uh, well, off track, but not real, real deep and steep, you know. You're just kind of kicking around, having fun in the park, in the backyard, that kind of thing. Uh, but you like the metal edge for control and a little bit wider platform for the deeper snow. There's the BC-70. But really, the rest of the skis are more what we're talking about when I think of backcountry. And I got them kind of broken down by the brands and the uh, models that they offer. So rather than kind of compare, you know, the Mad Zeus Epic to the Fisher uh, S-Bound 98. We're just going to walk you through the brands and their models. So let's start with Alpina. So here we have the Alpina Light Terrain and the Alpina Cross Terrain. Uh, these skis have been in the lineup for many years. They got a new look this year. Uh, kind of a, you know, a, a, a departure from the old graphic. Uh, the Cross Terrain has a a uh, lovely uh, photo of a rooster uh, on it, and uh, this is some sort of, uh, you know, but uh, anyway, graphics, who cares? It's all about the performance. The light terrain and the cross terrain. The light terrain's a little bit narrower. This is more of your backcountry touring. You know, you're mostly on sort of packed or, or you know, not the deepest snow. Just kind of having a good time going around. It's got a lot of side cut. As you can see, the profile of the ski, so it's going to turn nicely. Metal edge, big old waxless base pattern, so great grip on the hills. Uh, as does the cross terrain, only the cross terrain is wider. It's going to be sized a little bit shorter, more for the deeper snow, maneuvering around trees, maybe looking for some turns, uh, that kind of thing. So those two can kind of uh, take you pretty much wherever you'd like to go. I wouldn't consider either of these like real heavy duty backcountry where downhill is your number one thing. Um, they're really more for, you know, exploring, having a good time. It's all about having a good time, of course. All right, then we get into the Mad Zeus line, and we have the Eon, the Epic, and the Anum. These used to be Carhu's XCD GT, the Carhu 10th Mountain Tour, and the Carhu Guide. Mad Zeus bought Carhu, and now they are making those models. New graphic and new name, same exact ski. So if you're familiar with the old Carhu skis, here they are with a new look. Uh, the Eon is your backcountry touring uh, of the three, the most touring friendly, so it's the narrowest. It's going to glide the best on a packed surface, but again, it's still pretty wide, so it can handle some deep snow. But, you know, this isn't the ski for looking for that ridge line to point straight down. Um, this is more for just zipping along and maybe occasionally jumping off trail and making some turns, but back on that trail generally. So a good, uh, again, of course, full metal edge, waxless ski uh, for backcountry touring. Uh, real quickly, a lot of people like to wax, meaning they want to put kick wax. So actually, Manzus this year made the Eon in a waxable. So there it is, folks. Uh, every year I get a lot of calls. People ask me if I have a wax, waxable backcountry ski. I say no, but now I can say yes, we do. Here it is. Uh, otherwise, it's the same ski. Great backcountry touring. Um, before I talk about the Epic, let's talk about the Anum. 
because this is a real wide ski, really soft flex. It's kind of like a tele ski with scales on the bottom. So the scales are there to, again, help you navigate, get, get from point A to point B, but you're not buying the ski because you're gonna go on a 25 mile tour. You are kicking around the woods looking for turns. It's a big fat ski, it's got a lot of side cut and a soft flex. That means it's great for pointing downhill, making some really nice turns in powder. Not so great on a flat. Um, that's just the way it is. You know, it's like a mountain bike and you want to ride on a, a road race. <laughs> You're going to be having a hard time. Whereas on a paved surface, you want a narrow tire on a road bike. So that's the deal with this ski. Big fat snow, that's what it's for. Then the Epic is in the middle. So the Epic is a ski that's trying to, trying to do a little of both, okay? It's wider than the Eon, so it's going to float a little bit better in, in softer snow. It's a little bit softer flexing than the Eon, so a little more downhill friendly for that. But it's not as wide as the Anum, so it glides a little bit better. Um, you know, so really it's like trying to, trying to do it all. Yes, it glides better than the Anum, uh, doesn't float as well as the Anum. Um, floats better than the Eon, doesn't glide as well as the Eon. See what I'm saying? So you can drive yourself crazy, like, ah, just think about, you know, what is your priority? A lot of people like the Epic. We have uh, a nice package built around this ski, um, and uh, it's really kind of the best sort of do-it-all ski. So there it is. Now we walk over to the Rossignol uh, offerings that we have. I'll start with the BC125, because this is uh, a ski that was out last year, and here it is again, hasn't changed. Big old fat board, look at this thing. Um, I mean, it's fatter than the Anum. This is really a downhill ski with scales on the bottom. So now you're really talking about powder and downhill. That's your thing. You're not really focused on anything else. BC 125. Uh, the 110 Rossi, BC 110 Rossi, BC 110, <laughs> there we go, um, is uh, narrower. So here it is, you know, kind of trying to be like the Epic is doing. It's trying to be the all around ski. Plenty wide, has a lot of side cuts, going to turn really nice, going to float in deep snow. But yep, yeah, it's gonna glide certainly a lot better than that big old plank, the BC125. Um, so this is another, in my opinion, really good all-around ski. You know, kind of a little bit to do it all. And Fisher has a line of backcountry skis called the S-Bounds. So here we have the Fisher S-Bound lineup. Uh, the S-Bound 88, S-Bound 98, and the S-Bound 112. Those numbers refer to the width of the shovel, which is the widest part of the ski. And uh, a lot of skis are kind of, you know, def that defines the ski. Again, the narrower the ski, the more touring friendly they are. The wider the ski, the more downhill, deep snow friendly they are. What is your priority? You, you, you know, you could buy every single one of these skis if you'd like, that would be great. Um, give me a call, I'll hook you up. But if you're just looking to buy one ski, you gotta think, what is my priority here? There's no ski that does it all, um, perfectly. So anyway, the 88, the 98, and the 112. Um, I mean, kind of the same story as the uh, Epics, you know, you got your narrowest, more touring friendly, your widest for deep snow, and the one in the middle to try to do it all. Otherwise, just like all the other skis, full metal edge, positive waxless base pattern. One thing I'll say about the Fishers, even the wider, these have probably the most camber. So even though the 112 is the widest ski, it still glides pretty well. Um, Fisher really is focused on optimum glide. They can't get over, uh, you know, they don't like the idea of a ski that doesn't glide well. Even if it's wide, they feel, we can make it happen. And so they do. And not only is, does it have more camber, but the glide zones of the S-Bounds are actually sintered, meaning you could hot wax these and they will, the wax will absorb. Um, I won't get into the science behind that, but you can really get the maximum amount of glide with these models. Then I'm going to move to the final ski, and this is a, a super awesome brand new ski from Volet, the Vector. BC. This thing is a dream boat, and this is really powder, deep snow, downhill type of ski. Um, not, not a lot of fun if you're stuck on a flat for miles and miles and miles because it's fat and it's soft and it has rocker. Rocker, if you flex, if you squeeze the skis together, watch the tips. You see how they kind of splay apart a little bit? So that is so when you are really flexing the ski, the tips just float bring the ski to the top of the surface of the snow and you ski like a water ski. I mean, these things are for deep powder snow. Um, if you are, you know, in, in, here in the east, yeah, we occasionally get this kind of snow and boy, I can't wait till we get a day where I'm gonna take these out. But if you're in the west coast or, you know, Midwest, Colorado, Utah, this is a ski you wanna look at. This thing is awesome. Uh, it's basically the same vector BC ski, but this year they stuck on a waxless pattern. 
That again is so you can tour around, you can do a little, you know, uphill stuff without skins. So you're looking for, you know, little short, short hillsides where you can ski up pretty quickly, make some nice turns, go back and do it again over and over. Or, you know, exploring like stream beds, looking for waterfalls, floating off those things. Uh, it's a U.S. made ski, it's super lightweight. You can tell I like this ski, can't you? There it is. That's the Vole Vector BC. Uh, here is the sort of farthest end of the BC spectrum. Here is the other end. Totally different animals. And then all the ones in the middle. So you kind of have to, once again, think about your priority. What, what do you want to do? And then, once you figure out the ski, then you got to decide the right boot to go with that ski. We have another video for that. Check it out. Uh, once again, my name is Ryan from ORS Cross Country Skis Direct. Thanks.